Welcome to the Church Online Campus. We are so glad you're joining us. If at any time during the message tonight you have a question or you'd like to connect with us, go ahead and join our live chat to the right of the screen. One of our online hosts will be more than happy to talk with you. For all the questions regarding our church and what we're all about, go ahead and visit welcometothechurch.com. Now here's tonight's message. Enjoy. And we've been talking about growing. What does it mean to grow in our relationship with Jesus? Why is it important to grow? What happens when we grow? And today, I got to be honest, this last week, I have struggled with the topic just, just immensely. I have studied um, Old Testament stuff, New Testament stuff. I thought I was supposed to be speaking on this verse, and then I you know, felt in my heart I needed to change it and speak on this. I've gone back and forth so much this week on, on what I, I was really supposed to talk about. I, I've thought about all kinds of different stuff, but after all the highs and lows and trying to figure out what could we just sit on today and how, what's the proper way to wrap up the series, this statement just kept coming to my mind, and it was, growth takes time. Amen. Growth takes time. See, we've been talking the last, you know, three weeks about growing, and I, and I think spiritual growth is something that as a believer that, that we all want that we all strive for. I, I don't know that uh, many of us would say, well, I accepted Jesus, and I really like this spiritual baby phase. I'm just going to hang here for a while, okay? Not, not many people would want to just sit in that phase. We all want to mature. We all want to grow spiritually, but man, there's just a truth that we have to understand, and this is a, a life truth. This is a physical truth, but this is also a spiritual truth, is that any sort of growth, any sort of healthy growth is going to take time. I mentioned last week I talked a little bit about my son Elliot. Elliot's a year and a half old. He didn't go from zero to 30 right out of the womb, okay? I mean, that would be freaky. That would be way more painful. Um, <laughs> it's a, it'd be a different situation. Growth takes time. It takes a child from the time of infancy to the time of adulthood. It's years and years, and it's, and it's different experiences and highs and lows. Growth is a process. I've realized this process even physically for myself. There was a, a situation a couple years ago. This happened two years ago, and I, I remember the moment because it was like a, anybody, anybody ever had like a something's got to change moment in your life where you realized, okay, if I don't change something, it's not going to be good. I've got to do what it takes to, to make something happen here. Well, I had one of those two years ago. I was working in my office back here at the church. I had to go grab something out of the auditorium, so I walked, grabbed something out of the auditorium. I went back to my office I sat down and I realized I'm 24 years old and I'm out of breath, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I am out of shape. And just this like alarm went off. Jordan, you got to get into shape, dude, because you and Cheyenne are thinking about, you know, trying to have kids. You're going to be, you know, 40 years old and not be able to throw the football with your son. You got to get into shape. You got to figure something out. So I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start exercising. So I picked up running. Running is something that I just, I decided I'm going to start doing. So the next day I got up at five in the morning and I ran a half a mile. That's all I could do. Half a mile was my, that was my limit that day. Then the next day I decided I'm not quitting. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to run another half a mile. I did that for about two weeks. Then I moved up to a mile. Then I moved up to two miles. I've been running for about two years. In the last two years, this is something I'm really passionate about. I've ran three half marathons. I did a 18-mile run last summer, was it, Shai? Um, that, that's my longest. I didn't get the full marathon. That's still on the target list. But I love running, but I've realized you can't decide you got to get into shape and you want to start running and just go straight for a half marathon. You'll die, okay? <laughs> that's not good. You, you have to condition your body. And growth and progress is a process that takes time. Now, in running, I've realized a massive difference between long-distance running and short-distance running. And it's not really the distance that you run. There's this, there's this word that, that is a key point in the difference between long-distance and short-distance running. Short-distance running is all about short bursts of energy. You get off the starting line, and you're going to do a 100-meter dash, explode off of the line, start running, and you've got to strategize, okay, when am I going to gun it? When am I going to hold back a little bit? Long-distance running isn't about bursts of energy. Long distance running is about endurance. What can you mentally handle? What can you physically handle? What can you endure in your lungs? What are, what are you able to, are you able to defeat and endure through pain on this long run? 
It's way more about endurance. And as I've, again, been studying all throughout the last week, and this, this statement that growth takes time keeps coming to my mind, the thing I want to leave us with as a church as we get ready to move past the growth series and move on to our next topic we're going to be talking about next week, I want us to understand that, that spiritual growth is not about short bursts of energy, and spiritual growth is not about just, just getting it done and changing and changing overnight. Spiritual growth is a long-term process. It takes time, and it is about endurance. It's about endurance. And today I want to highlight a scripture. We're, we only got one verse for today, guys. You got lucky, okay? We're going to highlight one scripture, and it is Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. And we're going to read this. And then we're just going to break it down piece by piece today, okay? I like, I like talking like this. This is my favorite kind of message, okay? So let's just go ahead and read this. Verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. So what we see here is the, the writer of Hebrews is saying, look, here's the deal, guys. We, we need to walk with Jesus. We need to finish this race, but it's not a short race. We need to run with endurance. He's, he's comparing our walk with Christ to a run. So here's what we want to do today, and I'm going to, we're going to talk through this little piece by piece, but I want to talk about two things that endurance requires, and not just endurance, but endurance on this walk of faith. Here's the deal, guys. We want to finish the race. This is what this verse is talking about, and again, a difference between long distance running, when I'm on a long run, or versus when I'm on a short run. Well, when you're on a short run, you're going for time, okay? If I'm going to go run a mile, I want to beat my mile time. It's about competition, when I'm on a long run, it's not about my time, it's about finishing. Just get, just get it done. Just get it done. Do what it takes to, to make sure you finish the race. And guys, here's the deal. Sadly, sometimes I, I, I see believers who confuse their, their growth spiritually, that they treat it like a, like a short distance run. And, and they, they, they mean well, but what happens is sometimes we get saved and we accept Jesus and we feel like things need to change overnight, and we feel like things need to flip, and our whole life needs to explode with change in an instant, and there are times when things like that happen, but if we forget that our walk with Christ requires endurance, then not only will our faith fizzle out, but we won't finish the race. We won't finish the race, and we've got to prepare and make sure that we are conditioned and training ourselves and ready to go so where we can finish this race, race of faith. So the first thing I want to talk about today, the first thing that growth requires is it requires sacrifice. Let's go back. Can we just keep that uh, passage up on the screen? So it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely. I see two things that we've got to sacrifice right away. So if we're going to run with endurance, if we're going to finish this race, we've got to sacrifice some things. Weights and sins. Weights and sins. I wore this shirt on purpose today, okay? This like funny like face on my, on my shirt here. This is my grandpa. I love my grandpa. This shirt says Ron Happens. Uh, this is, our grandpa's name is Ron. We all act like him sometimes, so we made these for Father's Day. My grandpa, a couple years back, I mean, he's, he's an older dude. He's my grandpa, and he decided he wanted to start running. He got a call from the insurance company basically saying, here's the deal. If you don't get into shape, your, your premium monthly is going to be it's going to be way higher. So he said, I don't want to pay that, so I'm going to get into shape. And so my grandpa literally, and I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating, I'm not blowing smoke. He walked outside in his dress shoes, in his jeans, in his tucked in polo, in his grandpa iPhone clip, started running. The dude ran like that for a couple months. He ran every day, working himself up from a half mile to a mile to four miles, running in jeans and dress shoes and a polo. 
And I, I, was, I was just thinking, Grandpa, what are you doing? And finally, my parents, my mom's always, she's an avid runner. She, she finally said, here's the deal. You can't run like that. If you're going to continue to run, if you're going to actually be able to progress and move forward, you've got to get better shoes. You're going to destroy your feet. You, you can't run in the summer heat in thick Levi jeans and a polo. That's not good for you. You've got to get rid of those heavy clothes, get rid of those clunky shoes, and you need to put lighter shoes on and sh- shoes that can support your feet well. You need to wear lighter materials so you don't overheat and that they, don't, they don't weigh you down. So they got him some running clothes, and they said, you have to wear these. Do not run again with your iPhone clip. Put that thing away, and now go run. Now you can run in a healthy manner, and you can take care of yourself the right way. You'll be happy to know my grandpa wears actual running clothes now when he, when he runs and exercises. But anyways, what I see here is God telling us through his word, guys, I want you to finish this race. I want you to be the man and be the woman that I've called you to be. I want you to finish this. Last week, we talked about the sanctification process, that this is a process God takes us through of becoming holy like him. I want you to finish that process. I want you to just to, to finish the race. But you can't finish the race in jeans. You can't finish the race wearing your iPhone clip. It's, it's going to annoy you. You can't finish the race in a tucked-in polo. And sometimes... In our walk with Christ, in our race, we carry weights and sins. We carry weights. And I want to talk about weights first, okay? I used to think when I would read this that they were the same thing, that the weights and sins were the same thing. I, I don't think that. When I read this, I see weight and sin, okay? So let's talk about weights first. Some of you guys are believers, and you, you, you want to grow, and you want to walk with Jesus, but you're carrying in some weights. Let me talk about weights for a second. Weights aren't something that you're doing that's wrong. Maybe weights something that was done to you. Weights aren't something that you're doing that's wrong. Maybe weight is something that, that you just won't let go of. A grudge. A fear. A just something in your head that you just can't, you can't get past. Something that someone did to you that you, won't, you just won't get over it. And I, today, I'm not trying to say that what they did wasn't weighty. And I'm not trying to say that the things you're feeling aren't heavy. But I am saying this, that Jesus says in Matthew that when we take him on, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And if we're going to finish the race of faith, if we are going to grow in our walk, there are weights that we've got to lay down. I can't tell you what yours is. I know for me, I've had some forgiveness issues in my life. And it has been so hard to serve Jesus in times when I was carrying the weight of what they said and what they did. Because Jesus forgave me, and if I'm called to be like Jesus, I'm called to forgive. And I can't run, and I can't finish the race, and I can't do the things God's called me to do in my life and in my walk with him if I'm carrying these Levi jeans of regrets that I have and fears that I have and, and, and grudges that I'm holding. So I want to encourage you guys today as the church, put down the weight. I don't know what your weight is. I don't know what that is. Only you do. But lay down your weight. Now, let's talk about sin. We can't serve two masters. Jesus tells us that. And and what happens is is when, when Jesus saves us, he comes into our life and he gives us freedom. He gives us freedom. It's like, I love the story in Exodus of the children of Israel who were saved from bondage. Some of you guys may not know know that story. Basically, God's people in the Old Testament were, they were saved from slavery. God says, tells this guy, Moses, you go over there, you talk to the Pharaoh who's, who's enslaving all of my people, and you let them go. The cool thing about this story in Exodus is that it is a picture of salvation, That just as God sent Moses into Egypt to break the bonds of slavery on his people, God sent Jesus to the cross to break the bonds of sin on us. But something happened in the book of Exodus as the people got into the wilderness. What happened was they got into the wilderness and life wasn't easy and things got a little shaky and a little rough. And so even though their chains were gone, They kept looking back at Egypt saying, 
well, I know, God, you've given us freedom, but I'm a little uncomfortable right now, so I, I, at least back in Egypt, I had this. At least back in Egypt, they fed me, you know, three meals a day. Right now, we're in the, the wilderness, and, and I'm confused. What are we going to eat tonight? What are we going to drink tonight? Sometimes we accept Jesus, and we attempt to walk in freedom, but we keep looking back at our chains. And if you're here today and you're walking with Christ and you're, you want to live for Jesus and you want to live a life that's changed and new and you want to finish this race of faith that, that we're talking about in Hebrews, but you're looking back at the old chains that are holding you, what you're doing is you're saying, Jesus, I want to go with you, but I also I still want to serve the old master. You have to lay down your weights and you have to lay down your sin. I don't know what your weights are today and I don't know what your sins are today. You do. But man, there's something incredible that happens when we not only accept Jesus with our mouth, but we give him lordship over our entire life. And that means giving Jesus our regrets, giving Jesus our pains, giving Jesus our hurts, giving Jesus our lack of forgiveness, giving Jesus our sins and the things that we're doing that are anti what he wants for us. So we got to lay down our weight in sin. That's the first thing I see when I look at Hebrews 12. He wants us to run, but he wants us to lay down our weight and our sin. So then, here we go. Then let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The, the next thing I see in this is looking to Jesus. Looking to Jesus. This stuck out to me instantly when I read this this week. And, and I, I instantly thought about, it was the other day, I, I, when, I'm, when I'm training for running, I, I do one long run a week. And for, I've learned stuff about my body over the last two years when I run. Around two and a half to three and a half miles is when it starts hurting for me. It doesn't matter how good of shape I'm in at the time. That's my point of just pain. It starts hurting. And the other day I was running, I was doing a longer run, and I got to that point, that threshold to where I was like, okay, here it comes. It's going to start getting real uncomfortable quick. But I realized something. My body hurt. I, I'm running, and I'm like breathing hard, and I'm trying to, can I get my breast circulation going again and get back to normal? But my body was really hurting, but I just, I, I realized no matter how bad my body hurts, I'm not going to stop running. I don't stop running. For some reason, I just, I, I've got to a point over the last two years of you don't quit running. Your body's going to hurt. And I've, I've realized that these pains come and these pains go. But the one consistent thing is I'm going to finish my run. As believers, we've got to look to Jesus as our model. We have to look to Jesus as our finish line. Because here's the deal, when, when we're running this race of faith, there are pains that will come. There's always going to be pains that come, and there's always going to be burdens that we feel and weights that we feel. But if we're looking to Jesus, our perspective is such to where, you know what, life really hurts right now, but I'm going to keep running because this is more important than what I'm feeling right now. You know what? I, I really feel tired and worn out, but I'm going to keep running because I know what Jesus has called me to do, and I know who Jesus has called me to be, and the call, the call on my life is so much better than my excuse why I can't. Last week, I talked a little bit about a couple things I'm praying for us as a church. The first thing I was praying for was a deeper understanding of God's Word. This is stuff I pray over our team members because if we just simply understand God's word for all that he wants us to understand it for, that's going to do a big thing in the growth in our life. The second thing I was praying for was this, is that we would understand God's call on our life. That no matter who you are, where you work, what your past looks like, and, and what today looks like for you, you are called to serve Jesus. And some of us, that's in ministry. Some of us, that's uh, in, in serving at the local church. For some of us, you're called to serve Jesus as, as a godly mother. And you are serving Jesus by modeling what a godly woman is like to your children. 
You're serving Jesus by being a godly father. You're serving Jesus by being a, a believer and a potent believer in the workplace. But we are all called, and don't confuse this, we're all called to serve Jesus. And I just pray that God would help us understand that call. And as I was reading this, this word looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, that prayer kept coming to mind, the thing I'm praying for us as a church. And I just want you to understand this, and I don't know if any of you guys are thinking about this stuff or not. You are called to serve God. Some people would say that I'm a Christian, but I'm not really called to ministry. Here's the deal. <laughs> when I was, I was working at a church a couple of years ago, it was really funny. I, I think this is true. I think these things happen. I think it's really cool. We had a bunch of youth kids come back from camp, and they would all, many times they would say, I was called into ministry at camp. And I think that's so cool, because I really do think that stuff happens. But my response is always, no, you were called into ministry 2,000 years ago when Jesus died for you, and grafted you into the kingdom of God. We're all called into ministry. It just looks different for everybody. And I think sometimes we would say, I'm called to be a believer, but I'm not called into ministry. Maybe your ministry is your home. Maybe your ministry is your workplace. But the important thing is as we're running this race of faith, that we, faith is that we keep our eye on the call that God has for our life. This is the last thing I want to bring out about this passage. And I, I really felt strong about this this week. And I, I don't know why this hit me, but it, but it did. And I was reading the first part. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And I, I always heard that, and I was trying to figure out what does great cloud of witnesses mean? What, is that, what does that portion of the, of the verse mean? Because I, for a long time, I thought it meant there's people around us, and they're cheering us on, and they're saying, go, go, go. And it's like if you're running a marathon, there's like your family on the outside of the, the tape throwing water at you and stuff. Okay, so I, I thought that's what it was for a long time. But I did some study, and actually, what the author's saying there, he's talking about the martyrs. He's talking about the group of people that went before us in the faith, a group of people that because of their suffering, because of their faithfulness, because they laid aside weights and sins, and because they uh, looked to Jesus and kept running even when it hurt, because of them, we now run this race of faith. Now we have the faith. And so this is just something that's on my heart, and maybe it was because of Father's Day last week, and I was thinking about being a dad myself, I realize what kind of race the race of faith is. It's not a sprint. It's not even a marathon. The race of faith is a relay race. And this is something that's so, it puts a hard pressure on me, but I love it. There were people that went before us, and because they ran hard, we have the faith. What's going to happen 50 years from now? We are the cloud of witnesses to these people. And Dads, you're carrying the baton of faith right now in your family. Are you going to hand it down? Moms, are you going to hand it down? Grandparents, are you going to hand it down? Because here's the deal. These, this, this cloud of witnesses isn't just a theoretical thing the Bible talks about, and it's these people who live for Jesus, and they had easy lives, and all they had to do with their day was live for Christ, and that's how they passed the baton of faith down. No, no, no. They lived for Jesus. They had jobs. They had families. They had sicknesses. They had things they were going through, just like we do, and they had to run hard in the midst of it. And I just want to encourage us as a church. I want to be a church that passes the baton down, that moves it forward, that is so confirmed on the fact that we are called to serve Jesus and live for Jesus that we're going to lay aside our weight, we're going to lay aside our sins, we are going to keep our eyes on Jesus, not on culture, not on other people's opinions of ourselves, not on, man, that guy looks more spiritual than I do. No, we're going to keep our eyes on Jesus and what he's called us to do personally, so much so that that baton keeps going. And that Hebrews 12 is true in 50 years. When, when they look back and say, man, there were, my grandpa... You know, he, he lived for Jesus, and it was really hard. He had some tough times, but he kept the faith. And then dad, because of grandpa, dad kept the faith, and he ran really hard, and then he passed it down to me, and now I'm, I'm a believer, and I'm not going to quit, and now my children are going to have the gospel, and they're going to live by faith as well because I'm passing it down to them. This is a relay race. 
And as we wrap up this series in growth, this is the verse I want to leave you guys with. It's in, it's in 1 Timothy. It's in verse 14, or it's chapter 1, verse 14. Okay, and, and it says this, and it's basically Paul talking to someone he's mentoring. His name's Timothy. And he says, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And what he's telling Timothy is this. He's saying, there's been a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before you. That Jesus suffered so that we could have salvation. And the church ha has been pushing and pushing. And it came to you, Timothy. And this is like a, just a very valuable deposit that's been planted in your heart, that's been planted in your soul. Guard it. When those weights in your life start swelling up, Timothy, do not let them overtake the deposit that's been put in your life. When those sins start swelling up and they try to drag you off the path, look to Jesus, the race that was set before you, that the path that he has plotted out, know that you're called on that path and guard that deposit that's been placed in you and don't veer from it. And so families, let's guard the deposit. The gospel is such a gift. And when I look at this series over the last four weeks, uh, Pastor Kevin talked about different opportunities that we have starting here at the church. Take advantage of those opportunities. Get your family plugged into these growth groups because that's one way that you guard the deposit. Like last week, we talked about reading God's word, that we need to ask for understanding. We need to listen when God talks to us, and then we need to act. Guard the deposit. Guard the deposit. Do those things and act on those things because we need to be a church that grows because this is a relay race. There are people who are depending on us to pass the faith down. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to continue uh, with service today. Lord, thank you for this day. I worship you, God. I thank you for just the incredible opportunity it is to, to be a part of your church. Lord, I want to pray right now in Jesus' name, God, that you would help us to be a community of believers that is just passionate about you. That, that, that we look to you first, God. We don't look to systems. We don't look to an organization. We don't look to a person, but we look to Jesus. And God, in doing that, give us power through your Holy Spirit, like, like Paul says to Timothy, God, and like you say to us, to lay down these weights and lay down sins. Lord, I pray through the power of the Holy Spirit today, God, that, that those in the room today who are struggling with, with heaviness on their heart over a situation that happened years ago, or heaviness on their heart over something that is just going on mentally or emotionally with them, or in a relationship, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give and just empower them to lay down that weight and that burden. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to lay down sin. Lord, that you would help us to be believers that don't just hear the word, but we do it. We act on it. We live by it. And help us to lay down sin. The, the Bible says that it clings so closely to us. It tries to grab us. And it's like when you're running, if someone grabs your ankle, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to break free of all these sins so that we can run with endurance. That we can be the person and the, 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 the leader and the, the Christian and the believer that you've called to our families, and that you've called to our friends, and that you've called into our workplace. Thank you, Lord. Be with us today. Help us look to you. Help us to keep our eyes on you. I pray in Jesus' name, if there's anyone in the room today who's had their eyes on other things, Lord, that you would refocus our vision. You would send, just put yourself right at the center of our eyesight. Help us to look to you when life gets hard. Help us to look to you when, when things get tough. When we want to walk with you and we want to live for you, God, but we don't know how, Lord, just set our eyes on you. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.